Sometimes we stumble on a story that not only surprises us and surpasses our expectations, but makes us reflect inwardly on ourselves. Stories that capture us in this way are rare and special. Manga, much like comics, has the ability to provide us with visual representation of the story in addition to the narrative, but unlike comics, manga usually have much longer stories than something found in your usual single issues. I was looking for a new series to read, and as I was browsing, I came across Boy Meets Maria by Peyo. Cover originally caught my eye, but when I tried to purchase this manga, it was out of stock. When I was finally able to get my hands on Boy Meets Maria, it did not disappoint. Based on my first impressions, the series turned out to be completely different than I expected. Boy Meets Maria is published in English by Seven Seas and is a single volume series. The story is about Taiga Hirasawa, who grew up idolizing superheroes like Tiger Mask. Taiga wanted to be a hero, but he couldn't quite define how to be a hero. So he came up with a simple conclusion. Heroes protect women. Obviously, this childish conclusion is just that. Youthfully naive. As Taiga enters high school, he decides to join the drama club and wants to become a big actor in Japan. One day, he falls in love with a girl on stage known as Maria. However, Maria is not a girl at all, and is actually a boy named Armia. Taiga doesn't believe Maria is a boy at first, and even another student says he went to elementary school with Arima, who was a girl back then with long hair. Taiga denies it so firmly that when he confronts his crush, Armia has no choice but to show him physically that he is in fact a boy. This scene is very impactful and was also really sad. To know that no matter what you tell people your gender identity is, some people will reduce you to your body parts and biological sex. And really, it is such a depressing thought. And for so many people, this is the everyday reality they live in. With the last page of the first chapter, we're left with an impression that Taiga understands he did something wrong. He recognizes this and realizes he hurt Arima in the process. I can always appreciate a character and person who has the self-awareness to identify they've made a mistake. While Taiga's apology goes anything but smooth, he tries his best. His character is very simplistic and straightforward. While this can be a good thing, it's also a double-edged sword. While being honest with someone, you can inadvertently hurt their feelings. Peyo captures this concept perfectly through Taiga's character. As Taiga works hard getting to know Arima, Arima in turn finds out there's more to Taiga than he first thought. This story primarily takes place in the drama club during high school. This setting creates tension for the characters, providing further fuel for the plot. Arima presents as a woman while acting, but his peers expect him to make a concrete decision about his identity and put external pressures on him. Throughout the story, we're given glimpses into both characters' backgrounds. The happy-go-lucky Taiga reveals he's experienced his own share of trauma and challenges. Taiga is fortunate to have friends who look after him. I thought both his friends, Fukumaru and Tetsu, balance being frustrated with Taiga, but also supportive. It reflects both the ups and downs of what being friends with someone entails. It's not always smooth sailing, but when you care about someone, you work at it. Arima's story, on the other hand, unravels slowly in comparison. And what we find is behind a calm, collected exterior lies raw, complex emotions of fear, anger, doubt, and frustration bundled together. We're all products of our environment, the life we've lived, and our own actions. This can both be a positive stepping stone, but also baggage we must carry. I will give a warning that there is a scene involving the sexual assault of a child. And while the scene does not glorify it in any way, this may be uncomfortable for people to read. By Taiga admitting his feelings so fiercely to Arima, it makes it somewhat easier for Arima to be honest with Taiga in return. The strength of Arima's resolve to keep fighting to stand on the stage despite what happened to him, and Taiga's willingness to do anything for someone he cares about. Ironically, the two are jealous of each other's traits. Overall, this roller coaster of a story took me on an emotional journey. I went from not liking Taiga, to understanding his perspective and appreciating his character growth. The art amplifies the narrative significantly. You can just feel when a scene is a pivotal moment for the characters. The art style is very beautiful. From the soft colors of the cover, to the way each character's emotions are expressed, 
There are some panels where the style just changes ever so slightly, but it manages to convey so much emotion to make the changes stand out. The real tragedy is that Peo Koseiguchi died in 2020 at the age of 23. We won't get to see any more of the wonderful stories and art they create. While Boy Meets Maria is the only work of theirs published in English, they are credited for two other series, Kimio Alive, which was discontinued after the author's death, and Mother, Yoshiki Tribute Comics, Poliana, Volume 2, a manga anthology to the video game series Mother, as it's known in Japan, or Earthbound, as it's called here in the US. In spite of this, we are so fortunate to be able to read Boy Meets Maria. I greatly enjoyed this story, and if you're a fan of stories like My Summer of You or Boys Run the Riot, you'll enjoy Boy Meets Maria. If you haven't given the series a read, I hope you decide to pick it up. There are not a lot of stories featuring non-binary representation. I hope the story will garner more attention because it deserves it.